Good morning. My name is Hatim, and I work at Izetil as a backend developer. Today, we are going to be talking about uh, decomposing the monolith to microservices and API perspective. Um, I am giving this talk after uh, gaining some experience of working with Izetil and their backend team for two years. But these are still opinions that I have. Um, so, who of you have used Izetil before or know about it? All right. So, just briefly, we are a fintech startup based here in Stockholm. And our flagship product is the Izetil Reader. Uh, we give it to uh, small and mid sized businesses so they can accept card payments. And we are growing very fast. And uh, we are operating in 12 different countries on three continents. We are roughly 100 people here in Stockholm who are working in tech. And uh, uh, I will leave this uh, funny video uh, for later as a link. So uh, do your thing is our uh, motto. So microservices, it is uh, an interesting topic and it's uh, interesting to see like since 2014 how it has evolved and um, we first started hearing about this word after a blog post from Martin Fowler and um, James Lewis and and now in 2017 it has become the norm so e even even though it's the norm I still believe that people don't really understand what it really means and there are conference talks still talking about pros and cons and people still debating about the definition, how to, how to do things in microservices. So there is an ongoing, um, ongoing uh, topic of discovery. So I'm not going to be talking too much about definition or pros and cons of microservices. So I, I will just um, give you some suggestions on when you are moving from a monolith to a microservices architecture, what are some things that could be helpful for you? So this is the agenda. Um, I will describe the monolith, the context that I have worked in. And then I will share with you some observations. And I will also share with you some suggestions. These are not things that I have actively worked with right now, but these are some things that I think would be beneficial for a migration from um, monolith to microservices. So the monolith. In Isotel, we have a central monolith. We call it the sun. And it's very large in our context. And it does a lot of stuff. It does registrations, use, it has user data, it has uh, reader sales, a lot of domains packed into this one domain. And it was a very good thing to start off with when we did start off in 2010 and 11. And planets are the systems that deal with the payments. So I'm not going to be talking about payments here today, but just the, the monolithic part. And it's good to have these uh, planets distributed. So like if you are accepting payments in Brazil, we have a local planet that does all the payments over there and it synchronizes with the monolith in here in Europe. And so we have a good distributed architecture in that regard. And it's a Java EE, traditional Java EE app. It used to be on Glassfish, now it's on Wildfly. Uh, just a small tidbit. And we started in 2010-11 and we are eight to 10 products team that are working with this monolith. We build our services and we also contribute collectively to this monolith. And we have a daily release train. So every day in the morning, we have um, somebody who's dedicated to making a um, sun release. And their job is to make sure that they gather all the feedback and all the testing feedback from everybody and um, do a test test release and then do a do um, a production release it's a very tedious process but we have to do it some uh, for various reasons and one of them is like we are in the pci environment so it's a little bit of uh, ceremony pci i mean by pci i mean uh, payment card industry so it's a, um, a little bit ceremony over here so moving on 
I will start with the uh, my observations. Um, when we are trying to carve out services, so how do we start? Which services should we even extract? So that's that's a that's a fairly common problem. So and. A very well understood uh, concept in the microservices community is that you start with something that has a very well known bounded context. So, who has uh, heard about DDD or has read the read Eric Evans' uh, book? All right. So, bounded context is like in the very end of that book. So, if you manage to get uh, to the end, you know, kudos to you. It's a, it's a very very uh, uh, hard book to follow, but this is this is something that is um, uh, in the microservice community. We need to really emphasize that you need to learn basics. Go go to DDD and learn about bounded context, and make sure you can identify the bounded context in your system. So, in the example, uh, the example I will give is like we had a system called the KYC. Know your customer is a very common thing in financial industry because we need to know the customers that we are onboarding. And that was part of the monolith. Even though the function uh, that it does is not really, uh, it's not crucial to our daily business because once you onboard a, a merchant, you're not going to be constantly doing checks on them. It's like one time thing. And this is something that our risk department specializes in doing. So it's, it was a very good uh, bounded context. We know that uh, it's something that belonged to a different department. So we extracted it to a drop visit service. It has a very simple API. You know, um, a customer is, are they, are they good to go or are they not? Uh, if they're not, what's the reason? So we can um, easily um, tell them to change their, uh, like we can ask the right question uh, on the onboarding process. And I, I believe that decoupling a service is just not enough. If you don't have the right team, uh, then if the service does not belong to a right team, it's, it's not going to help you. So it, it is about definitely about organizational structure, but of course, start with a well-defined well -defined boundary and then um, give it to the right team after extraction. So that's my first suggestion or first observation. Uh, city planner mindset. I've heard this um, notion of uh, city planners. So what do city planners do? If I live in a city, I'm, I'm building like my own house. So I, I can hire an architect and I can hire builders and they can build a house as per my requirements. But... I expect the city to give me some common utilities like roads, maybe like uh, telephone lines, uh, things like uh, it could be uh, postal service and etc. So we need to have uh, and we need to have people or uh, teams that are with that kind of mindset, giving you that, those, that kind of infrastructure in a microservices uh, enabled uh, organization. So the problem that I have is like I have my services and there are so many other org uh, in the in my organization. How do we collaborate? Uh, how do we test together and how do we run them in prod? So the suggestion, uh, the um, observation that I have is that work with a city planner mindset. If you have a dedicated toolings and operations team, uh, they can help you uh, bring that infrastructure, bring that tooling to you. So that's what we have in at least in Isotel. We have a team called Hops. It's uh, Horizon and Operations, and they have uh, given us. Um, they have codified things for us. Like so, they, we have a Docker repository. So every new developer, when we onboard them, they check out that repo. Not only it helps them onboard to like installing Docker for their environment, but we also have like these Docker compose files that helps them. Um, bring up the entire infrastructure if they want to. Uh, it is so it's very easy for them. On first day, a developer can start all the microservices. I say all with a hysteric because um, if you have more and more microservices, a small laptop may not be able to handle them. But of course, you can compose them however you want. I want a small subset of my services, uh, and uh, I can 
uh, bring them, conjure them up. And also we have a select group of uh, people who helps them uh, define different kind of standards. Uh, we look at other, other standards uh, like um, uh, APG or, um, or shall I say Google. Um, and uh, so that's kind of like uh, looking at other people's city plans, other, other city planners. And this, uh, this word, city planner mindset, is, is, is a deliberate um, word because I, I don't think that the DevOps word, AI, DevOps word has been, in my opinion, been misused. So people are just doing DevOps. There are DevOps teams. What does that even mean? I think this, this uh, analogy is uh, much better. Moving on. I will have uh, some suggestions. These are things that we have been discussing. We haven't tried out ourselves. So making pacts. So one of the problems in when you are extracting um, services is that now you're going to change stuff. Now you're going to change your monolith, right? So how will you make sure that all, your, all the people who depend on you are, are going to be safe? Well, you can do a lot of testing, of course. But testing and integration testing and sort of like end-to-end -end testing is very expensive. And the more services you make, the bigger the problem is going to get. And of course, you can have different kind of API test suites and different kind of uh, techniques, but the thing that I'm, I'm very interested in is uh, consumer-driven uh, contracts. So in a consumer-driven contract, uh, consumer and like the provider uh, together, they decide, okay, this is my contract. This is what we agree on. And in this particular uh, example, I'm taking it from the PACT project. Um, so you write it together and it's, it's some sort of uh, executable uh, thing. And then it acts as a unit test. So for, for the, when provider changes their API, if they are not going to conform to the pact, it, their CI is going to go red. And of course, uh, the consumer can uh, also um, go and like, if the consumer wants to change the pact, they have to talk, talk to the provider. So in, in, um, you can say it is basically a communication pattern. We have that um, in Izetel, but not codified. Like we do talk to our uh, providers and the consumers talk to the providers, but we don't have it codified. We, we talk, talk to them and that, that's very good. But in a large organization, it is not so easy to scale as you may imagine. So do look at the PACT project. It's from realestate.com uh, in Australia. It's an open source project, and I would definitely um, um, suggest you go to their convince page. Like you, uh, so you can get uh, you can. There, there are lots of arguments uh, for why you should use consumer-driven contracts and why you should use Pact. The next and last suggestion that I have is self-contained systems. And I heard about that uh, two years ago at a micro exchange in Berlin from a um, like very smart guy called Stefan Toklov. Um, he so the problem uh, is that if we have a mon uh, like the specific problem we would have in Isotel is like we have a monolithic admin and you know that is doing a lot of stuff. It is doing reader sales management, it's doing user management, it's doing maybe some risk stuff and maybe some reports. And it's a lot of teams collaborate together to make that admin. It's a monolithic uh, servlet GSP app. It works fine. Uh, but um, should we break it into micro admins? Um, I, I think not. I think it should be more like uh, uh, self-contained systems where you build autonomous web applications and you focus on bounded context. Again, coming back to the DDD uh, concepts. And uh, each uh, self-contained system has its own logic, and there is uh, no shared UI between uh, these uh, self-contained systems. But how do you how do you even make them work together? So they they have this concept, a uh, very um, uh, not so unique concept of from web, just use links, 
and maybe like transclusion. That's how the web works. You have like one website, it looks links to the other website and it, they seem to be working fine. You don't need to have APIs all the time. Uh, so that an API is optional and that's uh, API would be useful for your mobile clients perhaps, but if you're working strictly in web, then you don't really need API. And that's a interesting thought. And microservices are more worse, uh, like there's a quote uh, from one of the articles that I um, uh, put in a link here. Microservice, microservices are more versatile while self-contained systems solve problems specifically with the architecture and organization of large projects. So that is something to uh, look out for. And here you can see in the diagram, like, you know, you have different kind of bounded contexts like search, invoicing, and they have their own web front end and you know you can link them together and you, of course you can tie them together with a nice like uh, consistent css so they all look the same but they are very very different applications so uh, in the very short time i had i um, tried to go over four different concepts um, start with well-defined boundaries work with the uh, city planner mindset uh, Contract-based testing um, should be able to help you. And look out for self-contained systems, especially if you have a large monolithic admin application. Um, yeah, that is, that's it. And um, I am early, but um, we can take questions uh, afterwards. So thank you very much. Okay.